What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and welcome back to the fastest, quickest, bestest online Revit free course in the world. I'm the Balkan Architect and we're continuing on. In today's video, we're going to be covering navigation, selection, setting up project units, setting up levels so you can have your floor plans and we're going to begin, begin uh, modeling some walls. But before we get into all of that good stuff, I would just like to ask you to like this video. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make Revit tutorials every day. And if you really want to support me, I suggest you join my Patreon, first link in the description, where you can get access to all of my Revit project files so you can look kind of behind all of those files and see how they work. But without further ado, let's get into the quickest, fastest, bestest online Revit course. So here I am in Revit and we're just going to start be starting off from the beginning and just choosing the architectural template. Usually you would want to go for an architectural template if you're going for any uh, architectural project. So just hit that. And whenever you start a Revit project, uh, I suggest this is the best time to set your project units. And you set the project units by just typing in UN. That's the shortcut for project units. And here, as you can see, you've got all of the units. Uh, now I'm using the metric uh, system, so I'm going to be staying in the metric system. But as you can see here, you can uh, change this to maybe inches or feet if that's what you prefer. But I'm just going to be setting this up to meters uh, or yeah, meters for this project. And I like to add two decimal places. So just set that up and then we we've got the unit symbol, but I just prefer to leave none. Then I'm just going to hit OK, OK again, and now all of our units are set. Now to go over all of the navigation and selection in Revit, I'm just going to be uh, placing a few walls uh, just to help me out. And don't worry about it, I'm going to be talking about walls later on, so you don't have to uh, kind of model them. I'm just using this for explanation purposes. So to navigate around Revit, you're mostly going to be using your mouse wheel, scroll wheel. Now, if you don't have a mouse that has a wheel, I, I suggest you invest in one of those because it's going to be impossible to work in Revit without it. So you just take that little scroll wheel and as long as you're scrolling away from yourself, you're zooming in. And if you're scrolling towards yourself, you're zooming out. So that's how you navigate. That's your zoom navigation. And if you want to pan around, what you need to do is you need to uh, you need to basically click that scroll wheel and just move around. And as you can see now, you can pan around. So using just a combination of zooming and panning, you can do all of your navigation for 2D drawings. Now, when we get into 3D, it's a bit of a different story. So to get the 3D view, just go up here to the quick access toolbar and you hit the default 3D view. You open that up and as you can see here, we've got our 3D view. So we can zoom in as uh, the same way we did in that previous uh, uh, floor plan and or a 2D view. But if we hold the, the, the pan button, of course, we can pan around. But how do we orbit around? Well, uh, there's a couple of ways. There's the, the bad way and the good way. So let's start off with the bad way. You can go over here to this uh, view cube and you can just select it and kind of pan around and orbit around. So that's one of the ways, but it doesn't really work well. Or you can hold the shift key and you press on your scroll wheel or your mouse wheel, and now you can orbit around. Uh, but as far as the where you're orbiting around, it's usually going to be like an arbitrary point. Uh, but if you want to or orbit around some element, you need to select it. So if I go over here over this uh, wall, if I just hover over it, it kind of lights up in blue. And then if I click on uh, my left mouse button, it highlights. So it's now blue. And now if I hold the shift key, and uh, start uh, panning around. As you can see, we're panning around that selected wall. But if I go over here and I select this wall to do a multiple selection, you just hold the control, you get this little plus sign next to your mouse, you select this, and now as you can see, it's orbiting around the center point uh, between these two walls. So that's basically how you just orbit around in Revit. Now to do selections, and uh, as you saw, so you just hover over an element, you click to select, you hover over a second element, you click to select, but the first one is deselected. That's how it works uh, in Revit. I know in AutoCAD it's a bit different because when you uh, click one element, the other one, uh, the other one gets uh, selected as well. So uh, here to select multiple elements, you just need to hold uh, the control key, you get this little plus sign, and then you can add as many elements as you want. But 
if you want to uh, remove something from selection, let's say you don't want this wall over here, you just hold the shift key and as you can see, once I press the shift key, I get this little minus sign and then just uh, left mouse click and that's gone from selection. Okay, now let's go back into level one. So just go over here to your project browser, floor plans, level one, just double click that. And once we're here, uh, there's uh, a one more way of selecting items. So you don't have to just click, you can just do like this. You can create this selection, uh, kind of square selection. And as you can see, if I, if I click anywhere on the screen, hold my left mouse key and just start kind of dragging uh, the mouse key to the left of me, uh, to the left side. And as you can see now, everything that I touch with, uh, with this kind of rectangle, it becomes selected. So if I just go like this, everything that I touched with that little uh, rectangle selection got selected. And to deselect, I can just click wherever, or you can use the escape key if you want. But if I go here from the left side and start dragging to the right, as you can see, I'm touching this wall, but it isn't getting selected. And as I, gr uh, as I go to the other side, nothing is getting selected. But if I move over here, as you can see now, this wall got selected. So why is that? Well. That's because now this uh, is inside of this rectangle. So basically only when an element is completely inside of this rectangle, that's when it gets selected. So you've got that uh, right to left selection or left to right selection, and it's just a different way of approaching selecting items in Revit. Okay, with that boring selection out of the way, let's just delete all of these walls. So you just select them, hit the delete, and now we can start with our project. And the first thing we need to do for our project, we need to set those levels up. Of course, without levels, we can't work in Revit. Levels are basically our floor plans. So what we need to do is we need to go to some view where we can see those levels. Now that can either be a section or an elevation, but we don't have any sections. We already have elevations. So I'm just going to go here to the project browser, find elevations, make sure that that's opened up and let's go to South south elevation. So you just double click on south elevation. And again, navigation is working uh, the same way as it did in previous views. So how do you now create uh, these new levels? Well, to do those, uh, uh, first of all, we need to set these levels that we already have, we need to set them up. So what we need to have uh, is this level one, it should be at zero, zero. And this other one uh, should be at uh, 305, so 3 meters, 5 centimeters. So I'm just going to type in 3.05. Hit that, and now it's set up. So you just double click on this little uh, number, and then you can change it. And if you want to change the actual name of the level, uh, you can go ahead and just click over there. So I'm just going to click over here, and let's just name this level. So let's call this level roof. That's going to be the top level. So just roof. Okay, and yeah, let's add a number, so 03 roof. Okay, and now we're going to get this little dialog that <clears throat> that is asking us, do we want to do we want to rename this view and you just hit OK. And now you do the same thing for this level one. So it's going to stay zero zero, but we're going to call it something like entry level. So just click over here and then go and type it in. And let's also add a number, so 0, 2. And let's just hit enter. And, I, and again, you just hit yes to rename those views. Now if I zoom out, as you can see, you don't have to change the number over here. You can also select this item and then just change the distance from the previous level. This is just showing you height from uh, 0. And this is just showing you the distance from uh, the last level. Uh, the last level. Now in this case the last level is at zero so these two numbers are the same but if this was on a different level as you can see now it's on something different this is now showing 2.1 and this is showing three, uh, 305 so you get the point this is just measuring from level to level. Let's bring this down to zero Okay, so let's add a few more levels. And how do you do that? Well, you're using the level tool. And for that, you can go over here on your architecture tab, you go and you find datum and you find level. Or as you can see over here, uh, we've got this little pop up menu and it says level. And then in parentheses, it says LL. That means uh, level shortcut is LL. So I'm just going to type in LL no enter is necessary, just type in the number, and then you can start placing another level. 
so there are two ways to place levels uh, so I'm just going to be showing you both of those so the first one is I like to go over here to the end of this level and uh, when it highlights with this little line just to see that we're at the same spot vertically I can just click once then drag to the other side till we get to the other point again we get this little uh, this little blue guideline and again I click one more time and now this level is set. I'm just going to hit modify to uh, kind of uh, exit out of the command so I can change this level. Now I can select it and let's set the distance. So in the last one we set the distance by clicking over here. For this one let's set the distance over here. So this is from level 1 and it's going minus 305. So this is plus 305, this is minus 305, so just type in 3.05. Hit OK. Okay, so we've got another level and let's just rename it and again let's rename it in a different way. So in this case I'm just going to select it and rename it over here. So I'm going to change this uh, to level, let's just delete this. So go to the properties panel, okay, okay, it's empty. So go to the properties panel and just type in something like lower level. And of course, let's add a number. So let's do 0, 1 for this one. Select yes, and as you can see, now it says uh, 0, 1 lower level. So you can either change that uh, name here, or you can go to the properties panel and change it there. Okay, so let's do one more level, and this is a different way of placing a level. So I'm just going to type in LL for shortcut for levels. Then I'm going to choose this pick lines tool, so this, what this allows us to do, it works kind of like an offset tool in uh, in AutoCAD. So you just select this pick lines tool, you make an offset, and this offset should be uh, at around 2.2 meters. So I'm just going to type in uh, 2.2, hit enter, and then just place another level. So that's the way uh, of placing levels using that pick lines tool. So you just come to the last uh, last last of these levels and you just click when it shows that imaginary line. Okay, let's rename this as well. So this will be 00, zero and let's call this foundation. Okay, so that's called foundation. And then again, you click yes. And as you can see now here on the floor plans, we've got our uh, floor plans starting from uh, foundation, level one, level two, and level three or the roof and we've got a, a site plan Revit automatically places a site plan with every project and here we've got some uh, ceiling plans but let's minimize those because who cares about site, uh, ceiling plans okay so that's enough for uh, the project setup and we're going to be continuing on in the next tutorial with placing some walls okay I hope you're learning fast and uh, I'll see you tomorrow with another tutorial